Only one way to get here. You gotta hack it. Halfway. There's a little mailbox here. Mind you, this is in the middle of the woods. So I'm walking along. La 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 la. Here's the trail. Sorry for this big spin here. There's the trail. That's where I came from. And then there's this little spot. You could certainly pitch a tent and sit down and light a fire. But then in all my days of hiking, I've never seen anything like this. Well, first of all, this looked like a skull for a second. So, and then right off trail is this big sort of, that's a pretty big pit. It's a round pit. Somebody put branches all over it. I'm sure it's not for safety or whatever, but um, I don't know. Meteor, meteor strike? Was there a... I mean, I don't see any trees that big anywhere around here, so it couldn't have been like a toppled tree because there's no like giant trunk sitting anywhere. So I don't know if this is... This is pretty tight right here. Boy. That was fun. I think they call this part the Rocknasium. All I've been doing is climbing rocks for the past boy, 30 minutes. Just like this. Kind of, you can't see that, but that's about six or eight feet down. I gotta put this away because I'll never make it out of here. Looks like today. It rained all night last night. My tent stayed high and dry. Walking through an area that's got some more of those mysterious holes. So I think I figured out what they are. Like there's one, you know, I can never tell the depth with these little tiny phone cameras like you can in a regular life. But here's another one. There's one. Then, I'm sure I'm more there, more than those. There's another one. Just like a big old hole. So I think there's sinkholes. I think there's just big fissures in the rocks below, and then the dirt just sort of caves in there. And then all that water probably goes to a spring somewhere downhill. So. This is the trail right now. I think I followed this corn fill for about a mile. Not much to see here. There must be a gun range right next to me on the trail. You can hear the shots and right there is a deer. He doesn't care. Funniest thing ever. I think this is the calm before the storm. <clears throat> I think coming out of Duncannon is going to be a straight up climb. I think you put the trekking poles away and you're climbing boulders for a couple hours and then running this really hard ridge. So <clears throat> anyway, nice to have this. A lot of work went into building this little walkway. It's 
pretty. It's been pretty flat the last seven or eight miles. I mean, farmer's fields, mostly farmer's fields, and now this. So, been nice walking through this area. I know I've got a, a serious climbing about. Maybe two more miles. Bush was like this all the way. Ole. Okay, this makes no sense at all. This is, I know I keep saying this over and over, in the middle of the woods. There's no roads anywhere around here. None. And here's a flipped upside down. Mm, could be a car. I mean, that's what the engine looks like. Could be a, it's not a tractor. I don't know. Why would it be in the middle of the woods flipped upside down? That's this crazy. And the rest of it is, I guess it's a little camping spot. Look at that Fred Flintstone chair. That's pretty cool. Another nice seat. Then here's some more of the vehicle, I guess. Hmm. This almost looks like a, some kind of trailer. Anyway, that's it. Fred Flintstone in a car flipped upside down, rusting away in the middle of zip land. There's a part of it. Hmm. Oil pan. Look like a standard transmission. Maybe somebody will look at this and know what it is. There's the very, looks like maybe part of the front. It almost looks like this car hit this tree because this bumper is just wrapped up in there. See how the tree is growing around it? I mean, it is wrapped up. What kind of snake is this? I mean, he's rattling a little bit, but it sure doesn't look like a rattlesnake. He's ready to strike. The hell? Yikes. I gotta get around this guy. Here's the setup for tonight. It's Monday tent right there. The AT is pretty close to here. I've got to hook my pack to the far side of the tent still and close that in. Built a little bench with a log and a stump and a rock. A little fire and a little extra wood. This is Table Rock, Pennsylvania. I don't know what this sun is going to do though. Exposure. Pretty. Somebody must have set this a long time ago. Actually built this whole little area. Looks like there was a spring. And then, I mean, a group of people must have set this rock 
right here it's like a little mini bridge over this stream and they built like a little wall along here also kind of meanders around the corner Pretty cool, actually. A lot of work. I think that was all done again back when the CCC was doing their work after the Great Depression. They put stuff like that together. Well, guys from the CCC, you're all dead now, but boy, I sure appreciate the work you guys did back in the day on this trail. It's amazing. You really helped shape this whole thing. Without you guys, we would have it a lot rougher. I probably look like a bag of dog. You know what? I hiked out a Dun Cannon yesterday, big bowler scramble. As soon as you cross the bridge, start going up. That was hard. But the hard part was I hiked almost my longest day. I hiked uh, 19 miles, basically, till 7 p.m. The reason why I hiked so long is not that I necessarily wanted to, but the water sources in Pennsylvania are like... I would say, if you don't have a little bit of an idea what you're doing, it could be downright dangerous. But to go um, 19 miles when it's about 80, maybe three degrees out and sunny, um, it's not super smart. I usually like to have at least a half a liter of water left by the time I get to the next water source but I was down to one mouthful of water and uh thank god that spring was still flowing there's a shelter in between and it was about 0 0.2 miles straight downhill and had a little mud puddle at the water source where there's supposed to be a spring so if anybody was hiking that and counting on staying at that shelter being out of water and then getting Fresh water is just going to be screwed, to put it um, bluntly. So, today is a pretty nice day. Basically, uh, probably outside Harrisburg, northern Harrisburg. But maybe an hour away from the actual city center or so, probably further than that. So I've got about a three and a half mile uphill and I'll talk to you guys later. So any future hikers watching this, um, be careful in Pennsylvania about your water. Really sort of study and know your limits. It's a point of interest. Right there, this water is coming out of the side of the mountain. There's nothing above that spot right there. You can hear the water running a little bit. Look at the color. It's just orange as can be. And that, I don't think that's from the mud. Again, the CCC built this little crazy bridge right here. The water's flowing under. And then it goes on down the hill, but look at that color. Never seen that quite that orange. I don't think I'll get water from here. Then there's actually a little camping spot up here. I don't know why people would camp up here next to that water source. But at least it's on this little, oh, it's got a backrest, nice rock to sit on, fireplace, uh, campfire. And then it sort of 
overlooks this valley, which is kind of cool. Actually, that water goes down. You can see it goes here, and then it goes and there, and then it just sort of ends. It sort of goes right back into the soil somewhere and down the hill. So it's just like this little cut, this little open water source. Really unusual.